final leg of my visit to Murray Speyside would be at the Malt Whiskey Capital at Dufton. Where I am met with dramatic backdrops, an honesty box and a warm welcome. I've got a feeling I'll like this place. Right, welcome back to our final episode of Whiskey and Golf and it's been a fantastic few days on Murray Speyside and certainly in terms of uh, whiskey then there's plenty of it about up here as there is everywhere in Scotland as there are golf courses but sometimes you feel like you've unearthed a hidden gem and I've got a feeling Dufftown is exactly one of them. Oh my word, second tee shot at Dufftown. Sun has come out, this is an, uh, well I think it's probably the tightest tee shot I've ever hit. We've got driver in hand, and I just hope I clear that tree line. Close your eyes, and oh, right through the middle, kicking on low. What a start to the day here at Dufftown. We played up the first views as soon as you get to the top of that first green when you're looking back down, and then this tee shot going through was oh, what a start. Right, we've made our way to the seventh and uh, we'll get to that in a minute but we'll walk all the way up here and uh, we're at the highest point so far i don't know where we're going next but oh my god this is absolutely breathtaking um the seventh hole by the way is fitty burn it's just 108 but you can see in the drone footage it's right through the tree line again uh there's a ravine all the way so it's it's basically green or bust we're into a bit of wind we've got a camera on the back of the green ready for the hole in one and uh yeah Let's see how we get on. Come on, hit one. I've hit one. Go ball, go ball, go. Oh, do you know what? I was a little bit, uh, well, probably stupid talking about a hole in one, but that was right on line for the flag and we should have picked it up. I've got a feeling it might be a tad short. Right, made our way to nine tune view and uh, another interesting fact about this golf course and there are a few t yet to be revealed but this is the second highest tee position in scotland 1200 feet above sea level i don't need to mention the views again they're pretty spectacular we've got a big camera in fairway for the tee shot left to right i'm gonna go with five wood That seems bang on. We're over the black and yellow marker. And you can see the first bounce left to right, but again, like I said, this course, I'll come back on shot for a minute. This course is just, apart from being really enjoyable to play, perhaps a little bit quirky even at times, it's all about what you're seeing around you. And uh, we've got a bit of a breeze, but the interesting bit is as high up as we are, there's a little bit of protection. Maybe it's the direction of the wind right now. We've got a big hill behind us, so maybe we're a little bit protected. But at the moment, walking up through the kind of uh, making our way to this highest point, plenty of tree lines and you've got a little bit of protection in amongst it as well. I'm sure that can be very different. Well, we've been on nine, we're on 10. Uh, what a tee position. Oh my word. I think I've said that quite a few times. We're playing off the whites, which is a 467 par four. There's a 340 yard uh, yellow tee box, which must be lower down there somewhere but we can't resist playing from up here it's called uh, aptly named glenfiddich uh, which the distillery is not too far away right can we get a ball going into that uh, backdrop i've teed off the front because i can't get a tee in the ground so uh i'm just off the little bit of grass one foot on the grass one foot off oh how nice of a feeling is that 
I'm looking at it now, there could be a bit of a camber off uh, left to right, which I didn't quite pick up on beforehand, and I might be wrong, but I've got a feeling we hit to the middle, and that could come down to that right-hand side and finish up, but oh, it's so nice to tee off them elevated positions and see your ball flying off into the backdrop. We're about to tee off on 12. I've got to say, uh, we've met a few people in and around the club this morning. Uh, John, the greenkeeper, has done a fantastic job here and very enthusiastic towards his trade, as many of these green staff are. But again, it's the, the people who are helping him out in terms of uh, volunteers. I mean, a fella just a short while ago who's travels from Aberdeen an hour away and he comes and helps out here two days a week to keep this place in the kind of condition it is. And uh, I think we often, they often get overlooked. We forget about how we turn up, play these places and uh, forget how they get maintained. And that's what's needed up here. Plenty of help and fair dues. So anyway, 223 downhill. I think, have I got the right club here? No, I'll have a quick change of club. Let's see if we can get an even with somewhere. I think the other thing we need to talk about right now is um, the cap. I mean, I don't know. It's like my wife's behind the camera. She's encouraged me to wear it and I'm looking at some of the playback of the images and I'm doubting it. So comments down below. Should I be wearing this cap? I should say that I've supported Johnson's of Elgin, which is uh, produces some fine old knitwear. But what about this cap, eh? That's a decent strike. Tugged it a bit left. Yeah, I'm missing the green there down that left hand side, but uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Dufton is idyllic, peaceful, and beautiful. Wandering these fairways alone in this tranquil setting is my idea of heaven. Incredibly, 18 holes is just 20 pound at Dufton. So my question is, why wouldn't you play it? Well, I just mentioned on a previous tee about the volunteers that we've bumped into, and uh, I've just met David again, who I spoke to earlier. You're getting a quick few holes in during lunchtime? Yes, I try and grab a few holes at lunchtime. So so it's nice and quiet. Well, first of all, you're doing a fantastic job, and I said you, you, I reference you, you travel from Aberdeen hmm. an hour away, and uh, how many days a week is that? Two, two days a week. Wow, it's incredible. And how long have you been associated with the club or a member? Uh, or? 55 years. Have you really? Since I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. We used to stay just up the road, four miles up the way. Yeah. And I was never away from the place. No, no. And it's changed a bit during that time? It's or? changed a lot because when I was a uh, youngster, it was nine holes up and down. Yes. 30 years or so, they got the opportunity to buy another bit of land. Yes. And it's the new nine holes over there. So the higher part of the, the course that we played on. And they were lucky there was a lot of mature trees and that, so they didn't have to do a lot of planting. Yeah, yeah. It was almost a ready-made golf course. Yeah, yeah very they, good. They put in a few greens, put in a few tees, and there's your and golf course. And this is what we've got, yeah, fantastic. Well, like I said, on behalf of everybody that visits uh, Dovetown, uh, you certainly got my appreciation for what you're doing. Thank you're you doing a great much. job. Keep up the good work. Will do. And enjoy your lunchtime round. <laughs> Thank you. Right now, of course, this is about whiskey and golf, and we're not going to forget that in this episode. And at the end of this, you will see what... A major component that makes whiskey, whiskey. Right, as I'm about to tee up on my final of the day on 18, it's another raised tee position with fantastic backdrops, which has been order of the day from Dovetown since we've started. And uh, I will say that this is almost, I said earlier on in the video that uh, you feel like you've unearthed a hidden gem, and that was very early on in the round, but certainly that is the case, I would say, here at Dovetown. If you're visiting Murray Speyside, then I think you've really got to add this to the list. It's spectacular in terms of its views. It's the epitome of Scottish golf courses. It's £20 from Monday to Friday to play it 
if nobody's here, stick your money in the honesty box and away you go. And that big shout out to people like the, the green staff that are helping out here. John the Greenkeeper doing a fantastic job. Anyway, that's me done at Dufftown, but don't go anywhere because we're about to take a trip just a little bit down the road. I'm going to visit a cooperage and find out how one special ingredient can make a big difference to how your whiskey tastes. By that special ingredient I was referring to was the barrel in which your whiskey is aged in. It makes a massive difference the way your whiskey tastes, but the question is how are them barrels built? And the ancient art form of cooperage is what's known as how them barrels are put together. It's a, it's a skill form which is very manual. It's passed down through generations and it still exists here today at Speyside Cooperage. And we're gonna find out exactly how they put them barrels together. Still using traditional methods, coopers shape, shave and char casks. And the craft dates back for over 5,000 years, would you believe? A barrel can last up to 60 years and the flavour of your whisky is greatly affected by the barrel. I was so impressed by the efforts from the coopers and I've not seen hard graft like this for many years. I think I'll stick to golf. So another series comes to a close of Scotland's Less Obvious and Dufton was the epitome of my endeavours. Less obvious they may be, but less enjoyable? Most certainly not. so impressed by the hard graft and efforts from the coopers i've not seen 